In this video, we're going to do a quick review of the properties of light and electromagnetic radiation. As we've identified in class and in other videos, light is the primary tool used to discover the internal structure of the atom. So having a good understanding of how that structure works means having a good understanding of how light works. Let's do a quick overview of the learning objectives in this video. We're going to start with the basic properties of a wave, things you should have covered in previous classes, primarily a physics course. Uh, we'll discover concepts such as wavelength, frequency, amplitude, and velocity. Once we discover the basics of, the, of a regular old wave, we're then going to translate that information into specifically light waves, or more importantly, electromagnetic radiation. We'll discuss how an electromagnetic wave is different than a traditional wave. We'll discuss something called the electromagnetic spectrum. And then finally, we'll talk about some formulas and calculations you can do to convert between different quantities, specifically the ones listed at the top of the page. Let's start with that basic discussion of wave properties themselves. There are four main characteristics of a wave and we're going to go through them one at a time. The first measurement we can make about a wave is its wavelength. As you hopefully recall, wavelength is the distance in space to complete one full wave. So it's either from the beginning to the end of the wave, from the top of two crests, from the bottom of two troughs. Any comparable distance that you can measure and use it of distance is going to give us our wavelength. The symbol for wavelength is this symbol right here. It is the Greek letter lambda, and the units for wavelength is the unit of meters. It is a distance, therefore we measure it with distance units. There are other distance units used to measure wavelengths, primarily this one when you're talking about visible light. This is a nanometer, uh, but generally speaking, all of them are measuring distance. The next characteristic we'll look at is going to be frequency. Uh, frequency and wavelength are definitely linked together. Uh, frequency is the number of that waves that repeat per second. You can imagine if your wave is longer or shorter, that's going to change the number of times it can repeat per one second. Um, the symbol for frequency, uh, in chemistry we use this letter here. It is the Greek letter nu. Uh, in your physics classes you might have used a italicized letter F for frequency. Both of those are fine. Primarily speaking, though, in this class, you're going to see this symbol, the Greek letter nu. Uh, the units for frequency are 1 over seconds, or inverse seconds, and that is officially known as a hertz. Uh, and Typically, the symbol for hertz is abbreviated with the symbol hz. Moving on with our discussion of basic properties of waves, the next thing in line is going to be the amplitude of, wave, of the wave. Uh, amplitude is the maximum displacement of, displacement of your wave from the origin, basically how high the wave goes and how low the wave goes. And that's what we have written down right here. It's the idea of the height of the wave. Amplitude doesn't really have a symbol that goes along with it. Sometimes you see either a capital or a lowercase a, uh, but I don't think those are generally accepted units. Uh, the unit, though, which is accepted, uh, is the unit of meters. Again, this is a height, as we've already mentioned, uh, and it's measured in distances. And again, we can have meters. And again, just like before, you can also see this expressed in a much smaller unit known as nanometers. Uh, but generally speaking, it's always a distance measurement. Our last characteristic is going to be the velocity of the wave. Uh, this is the speed at which the wave travels through space. Uh, this speed can change very dramatically based on the medium that your wave travels through. Uh, it is a velocity, so its unit is meters per second. We don't really have a specific symbol for this one either. Oh, I take it back. We do have our symbol specifically only when we're talking about light. Uh, when we're dealing with electromagnetic waves, we use the C for the speed of light. And that's got a number we'll talk about a little later on, but just as a quick three preview. 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second is going to be our speed of light. It's always going to be the same number. We could take those major characteristics and then apply them to a diagram of a wave. Uh, here we can see that this diagram is already labeled with wavelengths measured in a couple different waves. Uh, I always prefer this idea of going from the beginning of a cycle to the end of a cycle. It reminds me what the definition of a wavelength is. But likewise, any two common points on a wave can be measured and give us a wavelength as well. What we cannot show, oh, so the second thing we can show on this graph, before I get to things we can't, is we can talk about the amplitude of the wave. The amplitude of the wave is the displacement from the center. That's the height of the wave. Likewise, this is also an amplitude of our wave. These measurements should be the same for the waves that we're dealing with. What we cannot display on this graph would be the frequency of our wave, because that's a time-dependent um, characteristic. And what we cannot display on our graph here is the velocity of our wave, because that is also a time-dependent characteristic. Um, but again, we can kind of see how the characteristics we just talked about translate into the actual picture. 
As I've said a couple times already, this is stuff that should be reviewed from previous classes. Um, so hopefully, um, this even though this is pretty superficial, it's enough to kind of refresh the ideas in your mind. Now changing gears from general waves into uh, specifically electromagnetic radiation, what we have here is a diagram of what an electromagnetic wave looks like, and you can see it's significantly more complex. What's important to note though is that's just two very simple waves like we just talked about put basically superimposed on top of one another. Electromagnetic radiation is made from two different components. We have an electric component and we have a magnetic component. Each one of them generates a wave and as a result we get this two wave structure down below. The red wave going up and down here represents the electric field component of our wave and the blue wave going left and right here represents the magnetic field component of our wave. They're working together and what's important to realize is that these two guys are perpendicular from one another. It doesn't matter which one's the up and down one and which one's the left and right one, just matters that they're actually they're moving in perpendicular directions. Other than that, they have everything else that we normally expect from a wave. They have a wavelength, they have an amplitude, uh, they have a velocity traveling through space, and they definitely have a frequency. Um, what I expect you to know from this is basically just a visual idea of what this wave looks like. Probably not going to ask you to draw, and this can be complicated to draw, but again, just an idea of this picture in your head. Moving along, we can then talk about the electromagnetic spectrum. This is basically a list of all possible wavelengths or frequencies of electromagnetic waves. And different wavelengths and frequencies are how we keep track of what type of wave we're actually dealing with. That being said, when we look at our spectrum in a moment, we're going to see that this list of possible wavelengths and frequencies is separated into different regions, and these different regions give us the different types of light that we're um, expecting to see. We're very familiar with this type of light as being the one that we can see. This actually represents a very small part of our spectrum. Most people have also typically heard of these two guys, ultraviolet and infrared. This is the stuff we worry about coming out of the sun and giving us a sunburn. Infrared radiation is the radiation associated with heat energy. You've probably also heard of these guys before, microwave and radio waves, although a lot of people don't associate them as being types of light, but they most certainly are. Uh, radio waves we use to get radio signals, and microwaves are something we use for communication as well as to cook food. Something people are generally less familiar with is this one here on the bottom is gamma radiation. Uh, gamma radiation is a type of radiation we don't see very often, which is very good because gamma radiation is very high in energy and very, very dangerous. There are other categories as well, things that are a little less common, uh, but this is a pretty decent list of the types of radiation we're dealing with. Continuing our discussion with the electromagnetic spectrum, here's an actual image of that spectrum itself. I very strongly recommend you take a moment to find an image of this. It should be linked at the bottom of this web page, and there are many other versions of this electromagnetic spectrum available online. I encourage you somewhere in your notes to have a copy of it somewhere so you can make these types of references. What I expect you to be able to do with a document such as this is basically be able to look at a wave that you have, determine either its frequency or wavelength. You should then be able to compare that to the spectrum itself and determine what type of light it is that you have. For example, if I tell you you have something that has a frequency of um, 4.3 times 10 to the 11th, you should be able to look up here on the chart of possible frequencies, and 4.3 times 10 to the 11 it looks like it's going to show up somewhere in this region. I would definitely say that's either a microwave radiation if your wave has this frequency, or maybe it's possibly infrared radiation. But you should be able to look on this list and identify a type of radiation uh, based on, and let's put this symbol in here, even it should have been hertz, uh, based on matching it to a frequency or matching it to a wavelength. The only time this gets a little bit tricky is when we're dealing with the visible spectrum. You'll notice the visible spectrum occupies a very small part of the overall spectrum, but it's a small part that's very important to us. Uh, when you're looking at visible light, typically it's not reported in meters for our wavelength, it's reported in nanometers. This might require you to do some conversions uh, to determine uh, if you A, have visible light, and B, if you have visible light, what color that visible light actually has. So you can use the wavelength here to correspond back to the color of your visible light. To wrap our discussion up here, let's talk about a couple calculations you need to be comfortable with. Really, this is going to boil down to some formulas, and each formula has a different job. This formula first is to convert, to convert between wavelength and frequency of our light, and we have an equation right here. C, which is our speed of light, is equal to lambda, which we already said is our wavelength, times the frequency. Uh, you can plug in speed of light, which we already know. 
Uh, our speed of light, the official value is going to be 2.998 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. But very often we just use the number 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. If you know wavelength, you can calculate frequency. If you know frequency, you should be able to calculate wavelength. Make sure to get the equation itself co uh, copied down. Make sure to get the actual uh, values for C copied down, and you should be ready to go. Our second calculation then has us converting between frequency and energy. Each photon of light or each beam of light has a certain quantity of energy associated with it, and that's going to be very important in this chapter. And that equation looks like this. E is our energy, and that's going to be in the unit of joules. H is something known as Planck's constant. And that's a number we're going to be given in a minute. And then nu, as we recall from before, is our frequency again. So just like before, if you know the quantity of energy or you know the frequency, that allows you to calculate the other one as long as you have the value for Planck's constant. And the number we'll be using for this number is 6.63 times 10 to the negative 34th joule seconds. Uh, we can talk a little bit more about what this number means and where it comes from when we get to class. Our last equation then is really actually a combination of the two equations we've already talked about and what it does for us is it allows us to calculate the energy this is basically going to make for us an energy to wavelength conversion. Just like before we have H which is Planck's constant, we have C which is the speed of light. These two numbers are always known. This allows us then to convert between the wavelength of a wave and the quantity of energy that is associated with it. So that's pretty much it for our light review. We went through that pretty quickly, but again, it's things you should have seen in the past. We started off with a rundown of the basic characteristics that all waves have, wavelength, am amplitude, frequency, and velocity. We then translated that into a description of an electromagnetic wave versus a normal wave. We then started talking about different types of radiation as described by the electromagnetic spectrum. And then finally, uh, we talked about how to calculate energy, wavelength, and frequency of an electromagnetic wave. Uh, you should be able to identify different types of radiation types. You should be able to describe the differences between these waves. And you should ultimately be able to perform these calculations. These are all things we will review in class um, just to make sure that you're comfortable, especially the mathematics.